Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? And how was your day so far? Hopefully great. I'm going to complete what we said before about food. We're still in the same topic. But we are going to take grammar today related to this part. Okay? So we are going to start with present perfect tense. Present perfect tense. What's present perfect tense? And when can I use it? Okay, so if I ask you this question, have you ever eaten any unusual food? What does it mean? If anyone asked you this question, have you ever eaten any unusual food? Have and eaten unusual food. So it means in your all life, in all your life, did you try any food that is strange? In all your life, it means since you were a kid until now. So all your life. <clears throat> Sorry. So all your life. Okay? Okay. So uh, when can I use this tense and how can I form a sentence in this tense? Well, there are a lot of uses for this tense, but mainly I'm going to concentrate on these three. I want you to look at these sentences and try to think about the difference between them. What's the difference between them? I'm going to read it with you first, the first sentence. The scientists have worked in the Amazon since 2015. The, sci the scientists worked in the Amazon in 2015. This is the first sentence, okay? And the other one, number two. Okay, let's see number two here. I mean the second sentence. I have known Ahmed since 2010. I knew Ahmed in 2010. Okay, the third sentence that I want you to look at. I have lost my keys. I lost my keys last week. Okay. So, can you tell me what you see as a difference between them? Just to think and tell me what could be a difference in form and in use. Okay. If you notice that, in the first sentences, we have have plus pp. Have plus pp. Do you remember what's the pp? The past participle. Very good. We have taken this a lot now. Okay, have plus the pp as well. Very good. What about the second sentence? Past is simple. Past is simple. Past is simple. Okay. So now the first sentence is consisting of have as a helping verb and pp as a main verb. The second sentence, best simple. This is the form or that's the form. Okay, so what about the meaning? Do you have any difference in meaning? Yes, for well, sure. It's completely different in meaning. I'm going to start with the second one because we have taken already past simple. The signs to work in the Amazon in 2050. What does it mean? It's past simple. Very good. So do you remember what's past simple? Something that started and finished in the past. Very good. So it means the signs worked in the Amazon in 2015. They started work and they finished. They worked and they finished the work in 2015 in the Amazon. Okay, so what about the signs that have worked in the Amazon since 2015? It means that they started, they started their work in 2015 and they still, till now, till this year, 2020, they still work there. So again, it means what? It means something started in the past, but it continued or it has an effect in the present time. Okay, so 
we can say in English what the first use for the present perfect something happened in the past and has an effect or has a result in the present. What's the result or what's the effect? They still there. They still in the Amazon. They still working there. So it has an effect or has a result in the present. You can say has continued till now. You can say this as well. Okay, so let's see the second sentence. I have known Ahmed since 2010 and I knew Ahmed in 2010. So number two, it's past simple. What is meant by this? It means I what I knew him in the past. Now I knew him or I know him or not. Maybe yes, maybe no, I don't know. It, it already happened in the past, so I'm not sure if now I am a friend to Ahmed or not. But the first one, I have known Ahmed since 2010. It means I started knowing him in this year. And till now, what's the effect or what's the result? We are still friends or I still know him. So it means what started in the past and has an effect or has a result in the present time. Okay, very good. Number three, I have lost my keys. I lost my keys last week. Hmm. I lost my keys last week. It means it happened in the past. Okay, so now I have my keys or not? I don't know. Maybe I found the keys, maybe not. Could I have found them or not? I have lost my keys. It means I already lost them. And till now, till now, the result, what's the effect or what's the result? Till now, still lost. I don't, I can't find them or I don't have them. So you understood now the first use of the present perfect? It means what? It means something started or happened in the past and has an effect or has a result in the present time. And this is the most important difference between the present perfect and the past simple. Past simple, something happened and finished. But to present perfect, something started happening in the past and has an effect in the present time. Okay? Okay. This is number one. This is use number one. Let's see number two. Okay. I want you to read and just see what you understand. I have never eaten sushi. She has traveled to China. They have won eight Olympic gold medals. Okay, very good. I have never eaten sushi. What is meant I have never eaten sushi? It means in all my life, I never, never eat this food or try this food. Okay? She has traveled to China. Mm, yes, she traveled as an experience. She traveled to China, a new country. They have won eight Olympic gold medals. What is this? An achievement. They achieved something. Okay, so this is the second use, guys. So, this is the second use. If you are speaking about experiences or achievements in English, without mentioning or usually without mentioning the time, most of the time we use present perfect. Most of the time we use present perfect. So if you speak about any experience, anything, as an experience that you had in your life or any achievement that you had in your life, you can use these steps, okay? Uh, mostly we don't mention the time, okay? And if, if by chance we mention the time, it means it's not the focus. Okay, I'm gonna tell you how now. I have never eaten sushi. I have never tried sushi. I never tried this experience. She has traveled to China. She traveled to a new country, which is a new experience for her. They have won eight Olympic gold medals. This is an achievement. That's why we used what we used the present perfect. They have lost the BP or has lost the BP. So what's the difference now between she has traveled to China and she traveled to China in 2017? So what's the difference between these sentences? Both of them are correct. Yes. In the first one, you are speaking about it as an experience. And the focus is about the traveling to China, the experience itself. She traveled to China in 2017. You mentioned the date, you mentioned the time. This is the most important here in the sentence. Not the most important is the traveling itself. Okay? You, you speak about it as something that happened. Okay? And finished only. That's why you mentioned the time. 
okay? Okay, this is the second use, experiences or achievements. So anything that you did in your life as an experience or achievement, you can use this word, you can use distance. Very good. Okay. Let's see number three, use number three. What's the third use? Okay. Ted crashed his car last year. Ted has crashed his car again. What's the difference between the first and the second one? Okay. Ted crashed his car last year. It's it's worth all the information. It's something that happened from a, a long time before. So it's all the information that has crashed this part again. It means where it means this is something recent as a new information, something that happened from a recent time. So maybe now, maybe now his car still still have still has the the effect of the crash. It's not fixed yet, maybe. Okay, because it's new information from a very short time. So this is the third use, actions that have just finished. Actions or events that happen from a very recent time, from a short time, okay? Or as a new information, you can say this as well. Okay? Okay, very good. Of, co of course, you can read this um, as usual in our grammar book, page 24 and 25, to read more or to get more if you would like to. Okay, so now I understood when can I use distance and the difference between distance and the past simple. So how can I say a sentence in distance? It's very simple and very easy. That's the form. We use what? We use have or has plus the PP. Have and has here as helping and the PP here as the main verb. Don't forget our first rule ever. So PP means what? Means past participle. So do you, mean, do, you mean, do you remember what the past participle, guys? Third colon, again and again. Okay, so for example, if I said begin, begin is the infinitive, began is the past, begun is a PP. Full is the infinitive, fill, the past simple, full the PP. Okay, so you have to study them very well, guys. They are really important for us. I just give them back for you to remember. Very good. So now, if I have a sentence in the present perfect and I want to change it into negative, how can I change it into negative? Yes, very good. Haven't or hasn't, does the PP. Okay. And if I want to make yes or no question, have or has is helping the subject, the main verb. Okay, WH question, WH word, sorry, WH word, and then the helping subject and the main verb. The very main rule that we said before. It's like a repetition for what we have taken a lot or many times. Let's try an example. The scientists have worked in the Amazon since 2050. The scientists have worked in the Amazon since 2050. Huh? What do you think? How can I make the negative? Very good. Just the helping verb, I'm going to add not. So the scientists haven't worked in the Amazon since 2050. Okay, if I want to make yes or no questions, it's very easy. Start with the helping, then the subject, then the main verb. So have the science worked in the Amazon since 2050? Yeah, they have or no, they haven't. Okay, WH question, if I want to ask about in the Amazon, it's a place, for example. So WH question, where, and then the helping, where have the signs worked since 2050? Okay, easy. I think it's easy. We have already taken this before. So it's like a repetition only. Okay, so now, as homework, I want you to try to answer these questions. I have known Ahmed since, um, okay, let's say 2010, the first sentence, okay? And um, they have won eight Olympic gold medals. He has crashed his car again, the negative, the yes or no question, and the WH question, okay? Moreover, there are some questions I want you to try. It's asking about 
your life in general, your experiences and your achievements, everything that happened throughout your life. So have you ever, these are called, have you ever questions? So have you ever been on TV? Have you ever been on TV? Uh, have you ever, and you are going to complete the question by this. Have you ever been on TV? Yes, I have been on TV, uh, for example. And if you can say, I wanted to, okay. I want to give you an example. Yes, I, I can answer like this. Uh, have you ever been on TV? I can say yes. Yes, I have. Okay, now I answer the question. Yes, I have. If I want to mention, if I want to say when exactly, I can say like this. Yes, I have. This is the, this is, this is the answer for the have, have question. Have you ever? Yes, I have. I was on TV last year. Okay, so what do you notice now? I was, this is past simple, yes. Because you mentioned the time. You mentioned the time here. Okay, that's why you used past simple. But this is present perfect, yes. You already answered for the present perfect, but you can complete, added no information. You didn't past simple, it's okay, no problem as well. Okay? So have you ever been on TV? Yes, I have. I was on TV last year, for example. Okay, or you can just say, yes, I have, without saying anything else. But in conversation, I told you this before, we add more information about this. Okay. Uh, you are going to try for the rest. Have you ever eaten anything really strange? Have you ever fallen downstairs? Have you ever forgotten an important birthday? Have you ever dialed your country's emergency number, given a public speech? old snowman and so on and don't forget it's always pp okay very good so do you remember our gold rules what's the most important rule that we always repeat and we always say no keywords so these words can be used with other tenses so no keywords guys but these are some words that we can find or we can use with this tense to add to the meaning of these sentences. Just already yet for since ever. Okay, uh, just I have some comments on these words because they are a little bit different in use. So just and already can be used can be used in positive sentences, yet is used only in negative and questions. For should be followed by period of time, since beginning of time, followed by beginning of time, ever used in questions. Okay, let's try. Let's try yet, for example. I haven't sent the letter yet. So I used here what yet with what negative. Have you sent the letter yet question? And yet mostly at the end of the sentence. We use it at the end of the sentences. So it's used with negative and the questions and it's written at the end or used at the end. Okay, what about just and already? They are used between the helping and the main. She had just finished her homework. He has already eaten his breakfast. So do you see now, just and already between what? Between the, yeah, helping and the main verb. What does it mean just, uh, just it means from a very short time, okay? Just in a, a minute ago, let's say. And already you can say the same as well. Already done something or eaten his breakfast. So it means he is very, he is not hungry now. Have you ever swum in the ocean? Do you see it's a question? That's why we used ever. What's the difference between since and for? They have been there 
since Friday, you know, the beginning of time, for four, three days, number, followed by period of time. So again, what is the difference between four and the since? Because a lot of people get confused. When can I use this? I have been living in Spain for six years. So you mentioned the what period of time, the duration of time, the number. I have been living in Spain since 2012, the starting, the beginning of time, you know, the beginning. So always remember this, since, you, so you say after since, the starting point or the beginning of time, but for followed by the duration or the period of time or the number, okay? So for example, we can say for 10 minutes, number 10, for eight hours, number, the duration, for five days, for six months, for three years, for two centuries. You don't know when the beginning is what, for six years, starting from what year, we don't know. But since, you can start with the time, since eight, since eight o'clock, so you, you know the, the beginning of time, you know the starting point. Since Monday, since February, since 1982, since I left the school, so the beginning of time, the starting. Since the end of the last century, the beginning or the, the starting as well. Now for homework, I want you to try to use this using since or for, just to choose since or for January, for example. So I'm gonna use what, so is it period of time or is it starting or beginning of time, okay? Okay. As for the other words, we can complete this, complete with the right word. So I want you to try to complete these sentences. I haven't listened to their CD. Is it a good one or is it any good? So I can complete this using what? Okay. To so complete the sentences using these words as well. One more thing a lot of people don't know or get confused about. What's the difference between have gun and have been? have gone and have been. Both of them present perfect. Both of them present uh, have plus pp, gone and been. What's the difference between them in use? So do we have a difference? Yes, sure, there is. Mary has gone to New York. Mary has been to New York. What's the difference between them? I'll tell you something else. Has gone, we use it. It means what? It means she traveled. And Mary, the effect or the result is what, that Mary is now in New York at this moment. She hasn't returned, she didn't come back to Egypt, for example. She hasn't returned yet. But if I said she has been, Mary has been to New York, it means what? It means she traveled to New York and she returned back. She is now, for example, in Egypt. She has already returned back. So that's the difference between them. So have gone or has gone means what? It means the person traveled and still there, or he went to a place and he is still there in this place. But if I said have been or has been, it means he went to a place and he returned it back. Okay? I forgot to tell you something. I, I know that you know it, but I didn't, I didn't say it uh, frankly. Don't forget, guys, in the form, we said what have or has plus pp. So do you remember when can I use has and when can I use have or no? Do you remember has, s? So it's with the singular, he and she and it. And have I, we, you, they. So as not to forget. I didn't mention it. To make sure that you remember this one. Okay? Very good so far? Very good so far. Uh, before giving you this comprehension, let's have a look at our book. It's book two, guys, book two, unit four. Okay, I have never heard of that. We can contract, do you remember contractions? Yes, very good. Instead of saying I have, I can say I've never, I've, I've never heard of that, to make a contraction. Now we are going to talk about prison perfect and food as well, as, as a type of revision on what we have said before. Favorite ethnic dishes, do you remember ethnic? Mm, related to a certain country, Korea, 
he gave us a famous dish in Korea, and he said it's consisting of beef marinated with soy sauce and other spices. Okay, then Brazil, a dish made of black beans. Black beans, what is meant by black beans? This is black beans. Uh, do you remember we said the beans is what we have taken this before, and we said that we, we in Egypt, or most people in Egypt have what as breakfast, beans, falafel, eggplant, and so on. Okay. Uh, the Egyptian, it's brown, brown beans. What we eat here is brown beans. Black beans, this is black beans, guys. Okay, black beans. It's not so famous here in Egypt, but it's famous in some countries. Okay, black beans. It looks like black. Okay, so black beans, oh, sorry. black beans, garlic spices and pork for pork i have a comment guys okay what is meant by pork so that's pork okay I wanted to comment on this because if you traveled to any European country, it's always really important to know the ingredients of the food that you are eating. Okay, I'll go to the meaning. Uh, okay, this is pork, guys. Uh, again, uh, I'll give back to the picture to remember what we said. He said here, a dish made of black beans, garlic, spices, and pork. Uh, what is meant by pork? This is what is meant by pork, you guys. It's meat. But meat from what? Meat from a pig. Do you know what's a pig? This is the pig. That's the pig, guys. Okay? So, um, if you, that's why it's really important to learn. Because um, if you travel to any European country, they write the ingredients they can write the ingredients uh, in the menu or on the back of packets or uh, they write um, the description of what you are going to eat so if you don't understand that pork means meat from pigs and you are muslim you are not allowed to eat this it's taboo or it's a forbidden in islam to eat this okay taboo or um, a forbidden as we said before it's like haram Okay, in Islam to eat pork. Uh, another word that you may find, because we, uh, we have this word a lot as well. Okay, I want to get you, yes. Ham. It's a very common word that we use. That we use a lot, but we don't know the meaning of the word actually. What is meant by ham? Okay, that's ham, guys. Also, ham is pig's meat from the leg or shoulder. Okay, so ham means meat. Yes, it's meat, but meat from what? Meat from pigs as well. That's why if you travel, don't say I want to eat hamburger because it means meat made, meat made from the ham, meat made from pigs. Okay, so if you want to eat burger, you have to make sure if you travel, of course, uh, um, of course, in, in the Islamic countries or the Arab countries, we don't have bigs. So it's okay if you said, for example, in Egypt, I want to eat hamburger. It's not going to be made from hams. It's not going to be made from bigs because we don't have pigs in Egypt. Okay, we don't have, uh, and it's um, an Islam, um, 
a country or um, Islamic country, so we don't have this type of meat for Muslims. But if you travel to a European country, you have to make sure that what you eat is not made from ham or pork or pigs, okay? So just to make sure of what you are eating. So again, uh, then we have Singapore. It gives us uh, another dish, a dish made from fish head cooked in rich curry sauce. Then we have Latin America, raw seafood marinated in lime juice and chili peppers. So now I think if you studied the vocab related to the word, uh, related to food, sorry, you are going to understand the ingredients of this, or of these dishes, okay? Okay. Have you ever, let's listen for this conversation. I want you to listen. If you have a difficult word, you can ask, no problem. And after you listen, I want you to uh, try to find the answer for the other two questions. How did Steve like the fried prints? What else did he order? But before you start, um, because maybe you don't know these words, I want you to know, uh, you are going to hear these words, snails. Uh, okay, this is not right. This is a snail, guys. That's a snail, okay? In some countries, they eat snails. It's eaten in some countries. So how can they eat it? They eat it like this. So this is a snail as food, okay? Some people are gonna consider it um, disgusting or yucky. Others uh, or other countries, they eat it and they find that it's okay, okay? So you are going to hear this word in the conversation, snails, what else? Fried brains, fried brains, it's okay. Um, it's eaten here in Egypt for some people. Some people try to eat it or some people like to eat it. Fried brain, just like this. This is the brain and it's a fried, okay? So some people like to eat stuff like this, okay? So I want you now to hear and try to uh, find the answer for these uh, two questions. It's homework, okay? Just let me get you the listening. What you gonna do, okay? Okay, I think it's here. Okay, don't forget to revise the vocab related to food, please. It's a lot. Exercise three. So to make it easier for you, okay? Twenty. Uh, just a moment, sorry. Yes, that's it. Unit four. I've never heard of that. Page 22. Exercise two. Conversation. Have you ever? Part A. Listen and practice. Hey, this sounds strange. Snails with garlic. Have you ever eaten snails? Yes, I have. I had them here just last week. Did you like them? Yes, I did. They were delicious. Why don't you try some? No, I don't think so. Have you decided on an appetizer yet? Yes. I'll have a small order of the snails, please. And you, sir? I think I'll have the fried brains. Fried brains? I've never heard of that. It sounds scary. Page 22, exercise two, part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. How did Steve like the fried brains? What else did he order? Oh good, here comes the waiter now. Here are your snails, and for you sir, the fried brains. Thank you. Mmm, these snails are delicious. How are the brains? Well, I think they're... yuck. Oh, sorry. I guess brains are too strange for me. Um, I think I'm going to order something else, if you don't mind. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Excuse me, waiter. Yes? Uh, I really don't care for this appetizer. Could you bring me something else? Yes, of course. What would you like instead? Try the snails. No, I don't think so. I'll tell you what, just forget an appetizer for me and bring me a nice juicy hamburger, medium rare, 
with French fries and a large soda. Okay, so hopefully you understood it perfectly and it was easy for you, okay? Okay, let's see the next, the next one. Simple past versus uh, present perfect, okay? Now he repeats what we said a minute ago, use the past simple for completed events at a definite time in the past, but use the present perfect for events within a time period up to present, okay? Have you ever eaten snails? Yes, I have. Just note how he answers, please. Have you ever eaten snails? It's like an experience in your life because it's unusual food. Yes, I have. Uh, okay, listen to the, um, sorry, have a look at the, comp how did he complete the answer? I tried them last month, month. So here he used what try, that's the simple why, because he mentioned the timing last month, okay? Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? No, I haven't, but I ate at a Thai restaurant last night as well. Uh, did you like them? Yeah, I did, they were delicious. Did you go alone? No, I went with some friends. This is past the simple, the regular past the simple, which is very easy. Okay. So as homework, I want you to try to answer these questions, okay? You are going to complete using the present perfect or the past simple, okay? What are they talking about? Listen to six people ask a question about food and the drink in a restaurant. Take the item that each person is talking about. Now I want you to listen and to try to tell me what did you get as an answer, okay? So listen, please. Yes. Page 23, exercise three, pronunciation, no. consonant clusters. Okay. Page 23, exercise four, grammar focus. That was right. Page 23, exercise five, listening. Yes, that's what okay. are they talking about? Listen to six people ask questions about food and drink in a restaurant. Check the item that each person is talking about. One. Have you finished with this? No, I'm still drinking it. Thanks. Two. Did you order this? Yes, that's mine. Mmm, it looks great and smells delicious. Three. Don't you like it? I haven't tasted it yet. I'm waiting for the waitress to bring me a fork. Four. Did you enjoy it? Well, it was a little tough. I think it was cooked for too long. Five. How is it? Great, just the way I like it. Black and strong. Six. Your turn or mine? It's my treat this time. You paid last time, remember? Okay, so you are going to choose what they were speaking about or what they were talking about, okay? Uh, tell me more, have you ever been on a diet, tried ethnic food? Uh, have, you been, have you ever been to a vegetarian restaurant? Have you ever eaten something that you didn't like? You, you, you don't have to answer this, you, already answer, you are going to answer the other questions. Cooking methods, do you remember this? We have said this before also. The verbs that are related to food, bake, fry, roast, boil, barbecue, and steam. So I want you just to choose one. Uh, we don't have to answer all of them. How do you like, for example, chicken? For example, I like roasted chicken. Okay, so what about you? What do you like? So choose just one, one of these um, dishes or one of these methods and tell me what do you like, okay? Just one. Okay. Do you remember the recipe, the steps? Mm -hmm. Listen to this recipe from Elvis Presley's favorite peanut butter and banana sandwich. You are going to listen to this. It gives you here the ingredients and the, what? the recipe. Very good. We are going to listen. We are going to listen to this recipe and you are going to order. Order the pictures. You are going to order the picture, which one is number one, which one is number two. So look at the steps in the recipe. Again, number the pictures from one to five. Okay, so listen, let's try to listen for this. Page 25, 
Exercise 9. Perspectives. Family Cookbook. Part A. Listen to this recipe for Elvis Presley's favorite peanut butter and banana sandwich. Three tablespoons peanut butter. One banana mashed. Two slices of bread. Two tablespoons butter melted. First, mix the peanut butter and mashed banana together. Then lightly toast the slices of bread. Next, spread the peanut butter and banana mixture on the toast. After that, close the sandwich and put it in a pan with melted butter. Finally, fry the bread until it's brown on both sides. Okay, got it? Okay, let's try to order this. The second one that we are gonna do about the recipe as well, we revise the recipe. Do you remember sequence adverbs, guys? First, then, next, after that, finally, now. I want you to have a look at this. Okay, I want you to have a look at this. Here is a recipe for barbecue kebabs. Look at the pictures and number the steps from one to five, then add a sequence adverb to each step. Now you are going to look at these pictures. And after looking at the pictures, you are gonna write the number here, the number for this recipe. And you are going to add the adverb or sequence adverb here in this one. Which one is number one, which one is number two, which one is number three, and so on. So we are gonna number them. So it's a homework also. Okay, tempting snacks. Listen to people explain how to make these snacks. What, which snack are they talking about? We said before snack means where uh, just it's like a small thing that you eat between uh, meals. Number the photos from one to four. You are gonna listen and you are gonna number these snacks. Okay, so listen please carefully. Page 25, exercise 10. Grammar focus, no, sorry, just sequence kidding. adverbs. First, mix the peanut, page 26, exercise 11, listening, tempting snacks, part A. Listen to people explain how to make these snacks. Which snack are they talking about? Number the photos from one to four. One. I love to eat this at the movies. Sometimes I even make it myself at home. It's really easy. First, you put a little oil in a pan. Then heat the oil. When the oil's hot, but not too hot, put in the kernels. Next, when you see they're starting to pop, cover the pan. Shake the pan a little until the noise stops. After that, pour it into a bowl. Finally, sprinkle a little salt over it and enjoy. Two, let me tell you how to make my favorite snack. It takes some time, but it's worth it. First, you take an avocado and mash it. <laughs> Next, you chop half a tomato and half an onion and add them to the avocado. After that, you chop a little cilantro, you know, Chinese parsley, and put that in too. Then, squeeze a lemon or a lime on top. Finally, sprinkle the mixture with a little salt pepper, and of course, hot sauce. Mmm, it's great with chips. Three. A friend from New York City taught me how to make this. First, cut it in half, then toast it. After that, let it cool a little, and then spread cream cheese on it. It's really good for breakfast, but you can eat it anytime. Four. Some people buy the frozen kind at the supermarket, but I like to make my own. You need dough, olive oil, sauce, and cheese. Lots of cheese. First, you roll out the dough into a circle and rub a little oil on it. Then put the dough into the oven and bake for a few minutes. Next, spoon a little sauce over the dough. After that, cover the sauce with grated cheese. Then put it back into the oven and bake for another 10 minutes or until the cheese melts. Finally, cut it into slices. You'll love it. Okay, so now after listening, don't forget to 
do this as a homework to reorder the photos that you have here from one to four. Okay, let's go back to our, our presentation. Yes. Now, I want you to have a look at this. Reading comprehension. Um, reading comprehension, guys, is a type of question that you can find in all or most of even the international exams. Okay? So we have to try to read the comprehension and to try to get the answers out of this. Reading is one of the easiest skills that you can get. It needs just concentration, not more. And of course, a vocab, a little bit of vocab. But by time you get used to the vocab and you try to guess even if you don't know the exact meaning. Okay, here we have a reading comprehension about ice cream, because we are talking about food, I got you something related to food. History of ice cream reading comprehension. If you notice that, the comprehension is divided into paragraphs. Paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and until you finish, until you get to the end of this. Uh, why it's divided? To make it easier for you. Each paragraph is talking about a certain idea. It's talking about a certain idea. So ice cream in some form has been around for thousands of years. The ancient Greeks mixed the snow with honey and the fruit and so on. Okay? So here he is speaking about what? About the beginning of the ice cream. Okay? And it started with what? Ancient Greeks. Okay? It wasn't until 1660 that all Europeans could enjoy ice cream. So that's the time that started to get into Europe. How can I know the idea in the paragraph? We start to read the first sentence and the last sentence to get an idea quickly. Why we do this? Because most of the time, reading comprehension doesn't mean you are going to read all the comprehension or all the passage. No, we don't do this, guys. There is no time for this in real exams. I'm talking about real exams. I'm not talking about learning. If you are going to learn the language, you are going to read every word, every word in the passage. But if I am in an exam <clears throat> or in a test, we don't read. We read the, the questions first. Uh, ice cream was available too. Everyone, public uh, aristocrats in England, Marco Polo. So have an idea. And the next question, what's the next question? Next question. I start reading, reading, reading questions. And then I start to answer quickly because there is always time. So first we read the questions. Why we read the questions? To have an idea about the passage. It talks, it talks about what? It, it's about what actually, okay? Um, but if you have time, you can read, sure. Okay, so I read the first question. Ice cream was available too. Okay, so I have to read. Okay, ice cream, ancient Greeks. The last one, it wasn't until 16, all Europeans. Here, 17, ice cream had made it to America. Okay, served strawberry ice cream at her husband's second banquet. In the middle and late 18s, ice cream production in the United States. So I start reading quickly, 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 quickly. The paragraphs is about what? 
And by the end, I started to say, okay, where is the answer in the first paragraph or the second paragraph or the third or fourth? So we, in, the, in the real exam, we read the questions and to try to get an idea about the paragraph is it's what? It's talking about what quickly? And then you start to answer it. We don't read everything. Okay? Okay, so you got what, what I want to say here. Okay, for example, I'm gonna make the first question for you. For example, I read ice cream was available to everyone, public aristocrats in England, Marco Polo. So is speaking here about the history of ice cream, the beginning. So I'm gonna read the first quickly, the first paragraph quickly, not I'm gonna read every word. Ice cream has been around for thousands of years. The ancient Greek mixed it, snow with honey as fruit early. Marco in his travels to China, to have brought back a recipe for something close to herbed ice cream, uh, cream ice, cream ice as it was originally called in England, seems to have been a royal luxury, possibly available only to aristocrats. I got the answers. So I'm gonna say here, aristocrats in India. So it's a correct, it's a right, right answer. Okay, next question. Which of the following is not true about ice cream in its early history? I'm going to read the sentences and to choose which one is not true. So for homework, okay, I want you to try as much as you can, okay? Uh, try to get the answer for the questions, okay? So this is number two, number three. What is the main idea of the second paragraph? The second paragraph talks about what? Number four. What was the main reason ice cream production increased in America? What could be a synonym for the word perforated? What effect did uh, specialty ice cream parlors have on ice cream fountain shops? Chronologically, it could be the answer to what question? These are this. This is the first. So that's the first paragraph, second paragraph, third paragraph, fourth paragraph, fifth paragraph, sixth paragraph. Okay. So this is your homework. So you are going to try to answer these questions as much as you can, because I want to give you um, another one and to try to answer it at, as home. At home as homework. Okay? Okay. Let's move on. Story. Uh, we have a homework for story this time. What's the similarity between this story, the angel, and the story of the devoted mother, and bed in fall? You are going to find them in pages 11, 12, 13. And at the same time, you are going to match the animal with its baby. Sheep. What's the baby of the sheep? What do we call it? What's the baby of the cow? What do we call it? Okay. So this is your homework for the story. Short story book, guys. Okay. Story book. Business. Then we have another, um, another translation today. As homework also. <clears throat> Sorry. I want you to try to answer this. Uh, you are going to translate into English. It's just one sentence. Okay. Uh, I just give you this because I want to speak about countries and nationalities as well. Okay. Israeli. How do we translate it? Israeli. It's translated like this. Okay. How can I make the uh, nationality out of the country? There are different four different ways. I add to the country AN or IAN, Canada, Canadi um, sorry, Canada, Canadian, Egypt, Egyptian, Australia, Australian, Italy, Italian, Korea, Korean, ISH like UK, British, England, English, uh, other like France, French, Greece, Greek, ESE, like China, Chinese, Japan, Japanese. How can I understand the nationalities and study them? There is an easy way. 
for the nationality. Uh, by the way, you can read it in the grammar book, page 46. Okay, for the nationality, we have four different ways. I add to the country, I, A, N, or just A, N, or just the N, if I have A at the end, I, S, H, E, S, E, or there are irregulars, they don't follow any of these rules, okay? So I, A, N, like what, Egypt. Egypt, what's the nationality, Egyptian? So you add what, I, A, N to the country. Russia, it all, it, it's, it's ending in what, in A, so I'm gonna add just the end, Russian. Morocco, Moroccan, okay? So it's according to the ending, and then we add I, A, N, or just A, N, or N, just Libya, Libyan, okay, we added in Palestine, Palestinian, Palestine, Ilya, Palestine, okay? Korea, Korean, Syria, Syrian. Sorry, Syria, Syrian, okay? Then we have ISH, Spain, Spanish, Turkey, Turkish, Britain, British, Scotland, Scottish, Sweden, Swedish, Poland, Polish. ESE like Japan, Japanese, Lebanon, Lebanese, Portugal, Portuguese, Sudan, Sudanese, China, Chinese. So all of them, if you notice, end in what? Vietnam, Vietnamese. Okay, all of them ending in what? Ending in ESE, as we said. Okay, irregulars, it means they don't follow any of these rules. They don't have IAN or ISH or ESE. Afghanistan, Afghan. Germany, German. Saudi Arabia, Saudi. Iraq, Iraqi. Thailand, Thai. Philippines, Philippine. Okay, they are a lot. And um, we can have just some examples of them. I'm not going to say all of them, but we can have examples. Um, just before we can take the examples, we can have the country and the nationality. So, for example, we use verb to be from and the city. I'm from Sydney. You say the city. I'm from Cairo. Uh, the country, the same. I'm from Egypt. So, the city and the country, from. But if you are going to say the nationality, I am, and you say the nationality, I'm Egyptian, for example, I'm Australian, okay? So he is from Venice, he is from Italy, he is Italian. And the question is, where are you from? Where are you from? This is from the country. Where are you from? What about the nationality? What's your nationality? What's your nationality? So you can say, you can ask about the nationality, or you can ask about the country, or even the city. What city are you from? Uh, the rest of the country and the nationalities, as I told you, they are a lot. You can divide them to know how to study them. You can divide them like this. Try to write most of the countries in them in IAN, ISH, e, uh, ISH, uh, ESE, and irregulars. Don't, you don't have to memorize all of them. I just give it to you as an example. You have to know the common countries. So, for example, if a person from... Uh, Australia, so he's Australian, Argentina, Argentinian. I mean, if they are ending in IAN or they are ending in ISH, like British, okay, um, or they are, I want something different, maybe in the second one, or irregulars, you have Thailand, Thai, for example, okay. Syria, Syrian, we have said IAM, ISH, and the irregulars. Peru, Peruvian, for example, do you see uh, V before the IAM? I tried to get, to get uh, not all, but most, most of the countries as much as I could. Don't memorize Holland, Holland or the Netherlands, for example. It's Dutch, so it's irregular. Do you see now Dutch? So you have to know the irregulars because they are uh, confusing most of the time 
and to get some of the IAN and uh, ISH ES, ESP. It's going to be a little bit easier for you to do this. Okay. You can find a lot of videos related to the nationalities and the countries. I found just one. Um, you can just listen for the pronunciation of the countries and nationalities if you don't know, because they are not uh, all the time easy to pronounce. So you can hear it first and then repeat it. You usually ask, where are you from? Or, where do you come from? Come away. I am from, I am. I am from Argentina. I am Argentinian. I am from Australia. I am Australian. I am from Chile. I am Chilean. I am from China. I am Chinese. I am from France. I am French. I am from Greece. I am Greek. I am from Holland. I am Dutch. I am from Italy. I am Italian. I am from Japan. I am Japanese. I am from Mexico. I am Mexican. I am from Peru. I am Peruvian. I am from Scotland. I am Scottish. I am from Thailand. I am Thai. I am from the United Kingdom. I am British. I am from the United States of America. I am American. I am from Venezuela. I am Venezuela. I am from Wales. I am Welsh. Okay, so you can find a lot of, um, as I told you, a lot of videos you can use or you can hear to us to practice on this. Here is another video. Just listen as well. This watch. is Argentina. People from Argentina are Argentinian. They speak Spanish. This is Australia. People from Australia are Australian. They speak English. This is Brazil. People from Brazil are Brazilian. They speak Portuguese. This is Canada. People from Canada are Canadian. They speak English and French. This is China. People from China are Chinese. They speak Mandarin and Cantonese. This is Egypt. People from Egypt are Egyptian. They speak Arabic. This is England. People from England are English. They speak English. This is France. People from France are French. They speak French. This is Germany. People from Germany are German. They speak German. This is India. People from India are Indian. They speak Hindi and English. This is Italy. People from Italy are Italian. They speak Italian. 
This is Japan. People from Japan are Japanese. They speak Japanese. This is Malaysia. People from Malaysia are Malaysian. They speak Malay. This is Mexico. People from Mexico are Mexican. They speak Spanish. This is the Netherlands. People from the Netherlands are Dutch. They speak Dutch. This is New Zealand. People from New Zealand are New Zealanders. They speak English and Maori. This is the Philippines. People from the Philippines are Filipino. They speak Filipino and English. This is Portugal. People from Portugal are Portuguese. They speak Portuguese. This is Russia. People from Russia are Russian. They speak Russian. This is South Korea. People from South Korea are Korean. They speak Korean. This is Spain. People from Spain are Spanish. They speak Spanish. This is Tanzania. People from Tanzania are Tanzanian. They speak Swahili and English. This is Turkey. People from Turkey are Turkish. They speak Turkish. This is the United States of America. People from America are American. They speak English. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed this and you found it beneficial for all of you. Now, let's move on. Okay, we have uh, another homework today. Name five things that are vegetables, can fly, are found in a zoo, smell sweet. Another homework that is in the worksheet, worksheet two, page 19, 20, 23, and 24. So from 19 to 24, plus study the irregular verbs. I think this is, this is enough for today. Please study well, and if you have any question, you can ask. Thank you for today. Have a nice day, all of you. Bye.